Hello friends, today I continue developing my mobile app. There is still a lot of work to do, so let's get started. In my previous videos I mostly focused on small visual changes, but today I plan to redesign the most complex screen with the highest number of elements. But before that I did something very important. I refactored a major part of the project. Of course, there are areas that still need improvement, but I plan to completely change this code in the future, so I've left some things as they are. In every video I talk about refactoring, but what exactly is refactoring? Imagine your initial software project as a small house with only one room. This room serves multiple purposes. It's a bedroom, a kitchen, a living room, all in one. Among various items, you have a microwave in this room, which is used for cooking. As your project grows, you decide to expand the house and designate specific rooms for specific purposes. You transform the original general room into a dedicated bedroom and build a separate kitchen. However, after the expansion and renaming the microwave, which is now primarily needed in the kitchen for cooking purposes, is still located in the bedroom. This setup is not practical. The microwave's location in the bedroom doesn't align with its current usage, which is primarily in the kitchen. In software terms, this is like having a function or a model that's situated in a part of the codebase where it's no longer contextually relevant. To refactor, you would move the microwave from the bedroom to the kitchen. This change aligns its physical location with its primary use. In your code, this is analogous to moving a function or a component to a more logical part of the codebase, where it's most relevant and frequently used. This is reflected in your software as well, where their position code is more logically placed, making the overall codebase more maintainable. So, let's return to the redesign. As you can see, the current money map page, while schematically similar to the design, visually differs significantly. First, we need to add a gradient to the page icons, and secondly, we need to expand this component by adding titles for each section. Let's start with the gradient. What exactly is that? A gradient in the context of colors usually refers to a smooth transition between two or more colors. On the left you see an example without a gradient and on the right with it. To add such an effect to the elements of my money map sections, I use the linear gradient component from the Expo linear gradient library. To do this, I had to change the structure of the existing money map elements as linear gradients simply didn't work otherwise. By the way, for all four types of map items icons, I used the same gradient color component, the only difference being the colors, which will vary. Considering this, I decided to create a single map item component that will take one of the four variants of map items and decide on its own which gradient to use. Well, one section, except for the borders, which I will do a bit later, is working, and it's time to apply new settings to the remaining map items. I add colors for each entity to the theme configuration, import the general map item component, and gradually the page begins to resemble the design. The only problem is that the expense category section was made using flat list, unlike the other sections where I used a gallery. As you can see, the elements are not aligned vertically, and this needs to be fixed. The problem was related to the fact that Flatlist had completely different styles that overrode the styles of my map item. Although not very quickly, I managed to solve this problem, and all the elements started to look neat and tidy. The last task for today is to add headers for each section of the money map page. Well, that's all for today. I am very pleased with the result. 
it's quite similar to the design, although there are still a few important visual changes to make on this page, but I will do that next time. Thank you friends for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, see you next time!